Hello and welcome to episode 11, no less, of Bull and Specs. I'm Adrian Lacey and he in the Midlands is... Shane O'Connor. I wanted to go woo 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 like a Ricky Lake audience member then when you said episode 11. <laughs> but I, I reined it in just in time, Adrian. Uh, well, it's, it looks like rain, dear. Uh, it's that time of year, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't. Don't besmirch yourself by pretending to find that funny. Um, now... For people who are new to the show, a special uh, warm welcome. As we uh, as we speak, we're approaching Christmas, a few days away, um, and uh, I've gone to a huge uh, expense, as YouTube viewers will see, with four pieces of tinsel. Count them. Is it four? And you, uh, well, I think. Hang on, is one on the mic stand, or is it two? Oh yes, yeah, sorry. When you move, one there's one behind you. Yeah. Yeah. One on the mirror. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Lean back. Yeah. This is great if you're just listening on Spreaker, by the way. Yeah. Uh, oh, I tell you what, I'll make a bit of tinsel noise. In fact, I saw um, I saw tinsel around the Tampax at Boots the other day, but apparently it's just for the Christmas period. <laughs> oh, did we get away with that? I can't believe you did <laughs> that. <laughs> you've um, you've uh, you've mugged me off, haven't you? As they say in, in, in uh, Cockney circles, because uh, I, I, I haven't I haven't decorated all. All I've got is my Christmas mouse, which <laughs> Christmas mouse. he still won't sing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it does make a noise for our listeners. Yeah. Um, can I just describe, though, your mouse has... Um, can, can you put it back in front of the camera? Sorry. I'm down in the deep south, and you're up there in the Midlands. Well, of course, if you're listening in Scotland or anywhere north of the Midlands, it, we're both down there. Um, well, if you're listening it's got in a big Iceland, top hat. it's... it's <laughs> you, and then, oh, if you're in God. Rio, it's... Oh. No, I gave up geography at 14. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, never caught up he's got a carrot for a nose oh, yeah. as if he's a snowman yeah What's i mean we can all about? we can all point to each other's faults out can't we i'm not sure <laughs> well, you're bald you, you'd be so keen on it he's got a man united scarf on as well by the look of it i'm not really quite oh, sure that's careful. Careful. but he used to sing yeah. a song really good in fact i had it off my dad yesterday because he said do you want this tat and i said oh go on then i will because he's having a bit of a <laughs> and don't call me tat yeah exactly <laughs> and uh but um, he, he played yesterday, and I thought, oh, that'd be brilliant. So uh, next episode, I'll get you a real treat, a singing Father Christmas, I promise. All right, we'll get that. Sort of, but, so that's not working. What have you got there? Okay. Um, I have um, no expense spared Santa, which I'm holding up to the lens. Yeah. Uh, big, big, white, bushy beard. Um, but as off your air, bef bef before we started recording, uh, you did point out rather unkindly, he's a bit anemic looking, isn't he's he? He's grey. beige. Well... But on the on the beige side of grey, what he isn't is. Hold on, uh, hold on. So is, it, is this for people who get overstimulated at Christmas and think, <laughs> I can, oh, it's, oh, it's all the colours and the lights. I can't stand it. Get me a grey Santa. Is that? Oh, sorry, I, beige. Uh, well, I th yeah, yeah, beige, grey, whichever. Uh, maybe he's a Zen Santa who says. Did you did you get him in a minimalist shop or something? He's only got one <laughs> button as well. I notice. I mean, it's like it's not. I'm surprised he's not like six stone ringing wet as well. What what, <laughs> what, what is it? Uh, it's not actually my purchase. I think you'd have to ask my wife. I don't know the story there. Um, it's a bit like uh, what's that kids thing? Um, there's that character uh, with the dog in. Oh, it's from years ago. I can't remember. Paul Nicholas used to do the voiceover. Something very Zen and. Slow. Oh, I can't remember. No, not bad. No, that's uh, no. It may come back to me. Any, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's just fallen oh. over. <laughs> he's committed Harry Carey. He's, <laughs> he's, he's that's just very zen. He's just realised he's the most miserable Santa in the history of toy Santas, and he's thrown himself off the filing cabinet there just for people who couldn't see the pictures. He he left, didn't he? There, he really. Yeah, I'm looking himself. round. I, I think he is a, a, a. He's ceased to be Santa. He's an ex he's an Santa. Ex -Santa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, people who are new to the show, a special welcome to you. I hope you'll subscribe uh, in whatever form is convenient. Um, but Although we, do, we do really wonder why you haven't got better things to do, don't we? But uh, Well, but yeah. yes, but, but we're we're we, we don't want to that. point that out. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Too, too desperate to um, ask too many questions. Um, but we do talk a little bit about our personal experience of the week, uh, aside from a beige Santa. And uh, am I allowed two quick stories? Yeah, of course you can. The only rule is there are no rules. OK, uh, well, we will make that our guiding rule then. <laughs> um, I have in my house, I feel like Neville Chamberlain now, I'm just going to wave this to the, the camera. I have oh, in my hand yeah. um, uh, the best Christmas present anyone could have. What do you think it is? It's, uh, it's uh, uh, Katie Price's resignation. <laughs> it's, no. It's, uh, it's uh, a tax refund. Uh, no, no. More important than gold. What's it, more important than gold? A letter from Santa. 
<laughs> well, it's kind of Santa NHS, bless him or her. Go on. Uh, it is a clean bill of health. Oh, brilliant. Um, brilliant. Yeah. But people who are new to the show won't know that um, I had, well, putting it mildly, I had a little tummy trouble a few weeks ago, ended up in hospital. Yeah, that is an understatement, um, yeah. It is a slight understatement, but, but equally... Uh, there's always someone worse off than yourself. I mean, there's you, for instance. Um, and <laughs> we won't dwell on that. No. Um, but essentially, I was in hospital for a week, and uh, they did all kinds of proddings, as they do. I said, Are you sure that's strictly necessary, nurse? Oh, no, that was terrible, wasn't it? That was, that was uh, going back to the worst Bernard Manning ex um, excesses. <laughs> anyway, essentially, I am well. So that I always use... 2,000 words. Well, one will do, but I am well. That's great. You, uh, seriously, it must, be, it must be a, a bit of a weight off as well, mustn't it, to have, the, to have them say, you know, we've had a look, everything's great. Because, yeah. you know, it's a bit like Mad Frankie Fraser, I remember, you know, the, the associate of the, uh, the uh, Craze and the Richardsons. A uh, famous yeah, gangster. Close personal family friend. I, I mean, well, I interviewed him once, and, uh, and, and I said, uh, before the interview started, because it, it wasn't live, it was pre-recorded, and I said, uh, I said Frankie, you're there, because on, on, on our ISDN line, so he was in London and I was somewhere else. Mm. And I said, uh, are you there? And he said, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> right, I'm here, mate. I said, do you mind if I call you Mad Frank throughout the interview? Or, or Frankie, or what, what do you want to be called? He said, no, no. He said, call me Mad Frank. He said, I've got a certificate to prove it. <laughs> you can't argue with that, can you? Really? So it's, it's nice having the paperwork in order, isn't it? Really? <laughs> it's anyway, good, isn't it? You said two things. What was the other thing? You've oh yeah, this week? I'll be very brief with this. Um, I've learned, or I've been reminded, that despite the fact that you feel, or one can end up feeling in this digital age, that Google has the answer to everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, other search engines are available. Um, you can't beat the human touch. Very quickly, essentially, I was trying to look for a, um, this is very sexy, Hoover spare parts. I mean, it doesn't get more exciting than that, my, oh, felt, my glamorous like show. Hoover spare parts. At a, <laughs> oh, at a party. Yeah. <laughs> you've, you've gone all Johnny Vegas on me. <laughs> um, anyway, essentially, trying to find these um, caster wheels from the front of the hosey thing, the bit where it sucks up at the front, Mrs. Right. And. Um, uh, and so you can put in part numbers. You can you can delve into. You can get get a plan of the probably the electrical circuitry online these days if right. you want. Yeah. Numerous sites couldn't find it on the Hoover site. It was actually a genuine Hoover. Tried at the generic da 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 da. We do parts that fit any old machine provided it's da 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 da. Mm. Um, and spent. I must have spent two hours searching, looking at videos, how to fit this, how to do that, da 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 da. da. Uh, and then I thought, I'll oh, blow it. As a last resort, I'll go to, a, I don't know, what's the wildest thing you could do? Go to a Hoover repair store, which right. is five minutes' drive away. I go there, and within another five minutes, he's sorted it. And I'm walking out the shop uh, thinking I could have had two hours more of my life back. How old-fashioned. Very know, Victorian, very, isn't it, that? Very, very analogue, but it <laughs> works. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Yes. Hello, I'd like an analogue repair solution, please. <laughs> what do you mean? You want to I'm, fix your vacuum? Yeah. Yeah. So you get it fixed so, in the end. How did you know Mad Frankie works in our local store? <laughs> <laughs> Are yeah. you qualified it's Mad to fix Frankie? To you? Oh, God, I've got a certificate to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all sorted. Anyway, over no, to your story. Um, I haven't left you much time. But. Oh, it's only a quick one because it, it's just, it's like a kind of another baby store. Everything we do is like the baby related. It's like, you know, midwife appointments and. We um, should explain, uh, as of last week, you, you proudly displayed, uh, to those who could see on camera, your six-day-old son, as he was then. Yeah, so it yeah. must be something like 13, 12, two, two weeks old. 12, is he 12 or 13? Oh, I lost count. I don't know. Can I just say, when he's a teenager, you will not know how many days he's been on this planet. No. And you no. will not care either. I'm struggling a bit now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if that's a bad <laughs> thing to admit. Uh, but no, thanks <laughs> to him this week, I found out how, um, how belly buttons... Uh, work our form because his belly button dropped well his umbilical cord dropped off the bit that was left over because I cut the cord in the hospital they let me cut the cord did, did they let you um did you have a, a bottle of champagne or something and say I named this son Frank no Mad speeches Frankie. no not Mad Frankie no <laughs> 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 Mad Frankie <laughs> Unmad Frankie I never tweaked on that one yeah uh, <laughs> no no speeches no photography nothing nothing like that at all it was it was all very low key uh, but they just said gave me a pair of they just said do you want to cut the cord in fact they asked me before before labour started mm -hmm. And said you and I said oh, I don't really, I haven't really got any thoughts. And they said, well, we'll ask you later. It's fine. So they asked me. And I said, yeah, go on then. I will. So I, cut, I thought they were really blunt scissors, either that or umbilical cords are really, really tough and and gristly, you know. Mm. But you cut the cord, and then all this 
puss and blood oozes out oh, the centre. I know, they, they, they don't warn you about it kind of thing, but it's, but it's all like kind of clamped off, you know, so you're cutting the bit in the middle between the two clamps. And then so the baby's left with like the umbilical cord, I don't know, probably about a couple of inches, and then a clamp on the end mm. of that kind of thing, and then that eventually sort of rots and goes mangy and stinks to high heaven. And then, oh. and then I know it's it, it's like uh, people are going, "Oh, what a lovely bit!" Like, <laughs> I've got, sorry, it's his belly button is uh, it's a bit it's a bit rank at the moment, um, and then that <laughs> kind of drops off eventually. It leaves like a little sort of the stumpy bit, which is your, which is your belly button, and uh, and that's Gosh. that's basically how I, I thought there was some tying going on. So I don't know where I'd got that idea from, but. Well, it looks tight, doesn't it? It's like the yeah. end of a balloon. Exactly. Um, that, I think that's where I kind it. of got it from. Now, I still don't know, and I've been worried all week about this. I don't know how how because he's got an outie. I don't know how you make an innie or an outie. I'm not quite sure how what you would have to do for one. I think whether it's just a natural thing that happens. I don't. I don't really know to be honest with you. But um, as a non-parent and uh, not having delved into this, uh, I I can't illuminate you. But I'm sure someone listening to us or viewing us. Uh, might might get back on that. Yeah. So, I mean, in answer to your question, what do I do this week? I suppose you could say that I'd, I'd spent the week just navel gazing, really. Oh! Right, let's kick off with our uh, our first story for uh, Podcast 11, then. It's one that's grabbed my attention, Adrian, and um, I think has probably wound me up a little bit. And I know it's not like me. I'm, I'm normally a kind of... <laughs> Well laid, well laid back, placid kind of guy. But um, it's it's this this story about the Bank of England planning to end the use of what they call gendered language. What a load of cobblers! Um, in their policy documents, they they want they want to get rid of things like a a chairman um, and have a mm. chair or a, a chairperson, a gender neutral term. And I just I, whenever I hear stories about this, I kind of think. Have you have you got nothing more important in your life that you need to be getting on with and dealing with as the Bank of England, like you know, uh, ensuring that interest rates are at the the correct level or um, ensuring that the gold reserves are where they should be? There must be more important things to do in a bank than worry about gendered terms. Like, is it something that that you do? You worry about gendered terms and think, oh, I hate it when they say chairman. I, I do. I th- this is where I, I realise my purpose on earth is to try and make you more tolerant. Right. Um, right. Not to wind me up yeah. then. Absolutely not. Oh, you okay. know I would never do that. Oh, I got confused. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to point out the obvious, which is you're a bloke. Oh. Okay. Just imagine that you came into a world still as a bloke, still as yourself, yeah. Shane, as we know you, but yeah. everything was gendered female. So. Uh, when you went playing as a child, uh, imagine that the snow started falling. It was a snow woman. Um, that's a very trivial thing, but no, no, that's, uh, that's, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. And then when you got older, but you, you, you know aspired... why that is, don't you? I mean, that's that's historically that's because man used to be the term for a person. That is... uh, right. No, you know, you're going to educate me on this. Well, no, uh, I, woman I, I, means coming out of man, doesn't it? I, I, yeah, it's, and it's only, it's only because I, I just read somebody had made an aside and said this actually dates back. It's not. It's not about um, um, you know masculinity or or about uh, getting one over on women or anything like that. It's not. It's not about uh, misogynism or anything. You know, it's just. That, it's just that that's the term that meant person. Uh, if you go back in 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 history. Um, and it's it's now become something right. else. But but I just I just I just wonder does it does it matter a name for a thing is a name for a thing and does it does it matter that it that that thing has it like if you talk in French for example, they have the masculine and feminine really? version of of words all the while, don't they? Yes, and and even they can't tell you why. It no. seems completely random, doesn't it? No, there are historical reasons that I think even your average French person doesn't know. Uh, why um, I, I probably get this wrong? Uh, Le ciel for the sky. You know, why is it masculine, not feminine? If yeah. I got that back to front, then it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Although you did use an example, and of course, it's very much in your mind at the moment um, <laughs> of the midwife or sister yes? or a sister. Oh, well, no, yeah. Okay, let's do sister first. We'll work up to midwife. Don't let me forget that. Because can you uh, can you have a man sister? Uh, no, there is the term. I asked my nurse when I was in uh, for a previously mentioned illness yeah. a few weeks ago. I said, a, uh, what's happened to the term charge nurse? She said, that's for a man. And she was a sister. Now, 
uh, I was visiting someone once in a ward where charge nurse, and this probably is in thousands of wards, charge nurse was written on the door. So that's like saying, all oh, right, the real boss is a man. We might have a woman on duty, but we put a permanent sign up, charge nurse. I, I asked her, why couldn't she be a charge nurse? I'd be happy with that. But actually, of course, if, you, if you're a true feminist, you end up tying yourself in knots because if a woman, as this woman said, she preferred to be called a sister, what do you do then? You can't have a man telling, a supposedly feminist man telling a woman, no, yeah. you're wrong, mm. I'm more right on than you, you are going to be called a charge nurse. Whether you I like did find it, it odd. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I do wonder though, and I do worry about this this idea of people. Well, I'd like to be called this. If I apply for a job as a fireman, is it is it for me to start saying, well, I don't want to be called a fireman. I want to be called a fire person. I want to be this. I want to be that. Well, well, tough. I'm sorry. There's too much of this entitled to. I have the right to to do this, and I have the right to do. It. No, you, you don't. Who are you? Who are you to sit there and say, I want to be called this? Like, you've applied for that job. If that's the job you want, then that's the title you get. Why, why are you trying to change it all? Do you know what I mean? That's, that's where mm. I come from. Well, um, when I started at uh, The Beeb many moons ago, mm. uh, there, the, the job ad I actually responded to, uh, I went as a, a, a sound <laughs> operator was the term. The blithering idiot well, yeah. was the one I applied for. <laughs> that was in the small print. I didn't um, get it. I was too overqualified. I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but they were advertising The BBC was advertising At the same time as they were advertising for sound uh, As you might imagine in television You've got to worry about pictures too Fair, fair dues um, But uh, there was the title um, Cameraman And so it had sound operator Which is gender neutral So I, you know, it wouldn't have worried me If I was female or male uh, It was sound operator Yeah, But Next to cameraman in the job ad, and it did actually say cameraman, not camera operator, uh, there was an asterisk, and underneath uh, that, the asterisk uh, translated it, uh, it said, this is a traditional title, women can apply. God. Now, it makes me I feel, mean, well, you say that, grow but... Up. You know what I mean? Well, no, 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 no. We come back to you being born into a world which is, which is gendered completely against your gender. Try for one moment. No, I don't in... agree with that because, like I said to you, but you, know, what, you, what, you, what about, you haven't even tried to what, imagine it. Though. What about Queen? I mean, so we get rid of the term Queen now, shall we? I mean, you can't get more privileged and entitled than that, and that goes back through history into into the time when you suggest that it was all stacked against women, and uh, and women didn't get anything, and they were so oppressed. Well, how the hell did they get to become a queen? Well, I think that's more the continuity of the line, isn't it? Because uh, not necessarily, because they had queens that were put on the throne as a result of battle, weren't they? So, so that was like a forced, a forced uh, um, uh, sort, sort of uh, inception of a of a monarch or whatever. But but this 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 idea that you know it's all stacked against women. I mean, I watched a program the other day from the nineteen seventies, and there were there were two women. It was a news program. There were two women presenters in the UK. I think it was Sue Cook and somebody else or whatever. And I thought, mm. hang on. I thought everybody there was there were no jobs for women in TV in the 1970s. I thought they were so desperately oppressed that they couldn't get out of bed in the morning through the weight of their own oppression. It's just like it's it's rubbish. We're rewriting history. It's like what I find offensive, more offensive, is that in the same context, the Bank of England can actually say we've got a job going, and and if you're white, you need not apply. Now, how on earth can you can you balance those two things? That they they're so they're so offensive. As to be untrue, I, I can't understand how you can, at the one hand, be worried about whether you call somebody a chairman or a chairperson, and yet you can discriminate somebody on the grounds of race quite quite happily. Well, the many points you're spewing out at a high rate of knots. I'm, I can't help it. I'm, a, bo I'm a born point spewer. <laughs> <laughs> Dear friends, he's he's referencing something that we say off air. Shall I explain? Yeah, no, 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 no. Carry on with this. It's good. No, it's good. Okay, I'm loving okay. it. Go on. Right. So you say so you've gone back to the seventies. Fair dues. Um, Anna Ford, uh, I think, was on screen in the seventies. You'd only have to go back to the previous decade to find, I think, uh, well, there was there was one woman newsreader, perhaps in the fifties, but in the in the sixties. I think you would struggle to find because all all the people I was brought up on. No, I, I think I think you just remember it differently. If you look back at, at broadcasts from Alexandra Palace in the in the nineteen thirties and forties, they were they were by women. Oh, there was Jasmine Bly, or Blythe. Um, 
with a famous sort of welcome back after the war. <laughs> welcome um, back so, after the war. <laughs> Did yeah. you enjoy that? <laughs> yes. How was it for you? Don't Apparently worry. They we'll put have on the, one. the Mickey Mouse film. They put on the Mickey Mouse movie that they'd interrupted when war broke out in, yeah. in September 39. <laughs> but that's another story. I'm drifting yeah. off. Um, you haven't prompted me, probably because you're frightened I'm going to get you on this, skewer you on this. Go on. Um, you said to me uh, off air about, uh, what about midwives? No, then? Is no, that... no, that's fine. Yeah, midwife, go on. Give, give, midwife right. is really another well, good example. I, I put it to a female midwife friend of mine, or she's moved on to, uh, she's had an array of jobs, actually. She was an actress. She then worked uh, with, uh, in, in radio production. Anyway, at one point she became a midwife. Yeah. And I said to her, um, is, is that a sexist term? You know, because you do have well, it quite male clearly is. midwives. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'd think so. Uh, um, but, and I thought that, but I was corrected on that. She said it goes back to, uh, and you'll love this, is it Old English or High German or something? Mm. The mid actually means with. Do you do German? Have you spoke? I can't nine. Even find the phrase. Nine. nine. Exactly. Very good. Uh, me, me, nine, nine. The. Uh, anyway, I think mit is with, isn't it? But anyway, it comes from uh, an older version of either. Well, English comes out of German anyway. Um, that's a subject of another podcast. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll probably get you on your giddy goat. But uh, so essentially, the the title of the midwife is saying someone who is with the wife. So right. that can be male or female. But but but. In modern transit, you, I mean, you can't have it both ways, can you? You can't say, well, we're discounted that man used to mean person, um, and so that's not valid, in the same way that you can't say, well, wife used to mean this, and that is a, then a valid argument. It's either, it's either a valid argument going back in history or it isn't, in which case, if you're going to go back to the, the, the history of a word, then surely you can say, well, anything with man in it means person, and therefore it's an invalid argument. Well, but but to follow that argument, you'd have to stop using the word woman, wouldn't you? Does it does it matter? Do you know I'm a great believer. Does it matter about what we what we are, and more about who we are, what what we achieve, and what we do? Is is it? Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like whether you're gay or whether you're a woman or whether you're. Um, black or whether you're a Muslim or you know all those like religion race sex all of those things mm. I don't it doesn't it doesn't and the, the more you get hung up on on what you are rather than who you are I think is a slippery slope but the real problem that I have and I think it's it's hysterical at the end of the day and nobody's mentioned this is that this is the Bank of England mm. doing this or otherwise known as the old lady of Threadneedle Street <laughs> so presumably she's going to become the old person of Threadneedle Street from now on So we're into Act 3 of 3 here on Bull and Specs, Episode 11 and we're going to chew off a story about Uber which is forever in the news and not always in the most flattering way uh, Did you catch this, uh, Shane, about mm. Uber, shock horror being a taxi firm in law uh, after a, a European Court uh, of Justice ruling, uh, as opposed to an information service, which, which is what they claimed. Yeah. Shock horror. Yeah. Do, do you get the feeling as well, though, that they're just after Uber no matter what? Um, well, yeah, they, they seem to have the wind in their sails on that side, don't they? Mm. I mean, the, Sadiq Khan, the, the mayor of London's pulled the plugs on them and... and um, not not allowing them a license to operate in London. Although they are still operating, aren't they? Because until the, they've got an appeal, haven't they? So until the appeal is heard, they still they can still operate, can't they? I think. Yes, and and frankly, my wife is uh, is relieved because she couldn't operate without them at the moment. She seems to. Um, uh, I think well, she's excusing it uh, on on Christmas grounds, but she's going to an awful lot of late parties. Yeah. That's at least what she's telling her husband. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't ask too many questions. Uh, as long as my lover's gone by the time she gets back. Yeah, as long as, you, um, long as anyway. you've got the Dagenham Girl Pipers out of the house, it doesn't matter, does it, really? That's the, that's, that's the How main. did you know? Who's telling you? That's the main thing. <laughs> the cheerleaders <laughs> from the wardrobe. Um, the no. Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So she used it. Uh, you've, you've never used them, have you? Have you I've never used it, and I am... I. I'm trying to be a bit principled about this, but actually my principles usually melt like the, the morning dew um, uh, or the morning frost, whichever the image is. Um, 
But she finds them very useful. And of course, the number one thing, bottom line, is they're cheap. And she seems to be, uh, as I say, forever at these late parties, missing the last train home. Yeah. Are, are, they, so, che- um, are they cheaper than... Because they're cheaper than black cabs. There's no question about that, is there, in particularly yeah. in the capital. But are they cheaper yes. than private hire cabs as well, are they? Is, are they a better, a better I can option? only assume they are. Um, and, uh, yes, they're undercutting on, on price, I think. But the other thing is, well, you have to kind of qualify that because the moment the rain comes down, and at certain times of day, um, it's, it's pure capitalism. It's, it's supply and demand. So the, the price can rise uh, if there's suddenly a run on the, on the cabs or there's a scarcity of, uh, of cabs around. Um, I didn't realise that. So it's the, 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 yeah. the, the, the cost is fluid then to the customer. It's as fluid as the rain that uh, that falls out of the sky. I yeah. had no idea yeah. that that was the case. See, I thought it was just yeah. it was just a, you know a, a, an information service as they claimed it was, and they they mm. hook you up with a vehicle and and they have standards. So you know, if I go so if I go from I don't know from Basingstoke to London every day of a week, I could get charged different rates depending on what time of day and how available cars are. Yes. Well, um, that, that, yeah. Gone off it all of a sudden. I mean, I was never really <laughs> on it, but I kind of, like I say, I've never used the thing, but I didn't really, I didn't, I'm not sure about that. I, I can only assume anecdotally, I'm not hearing many people say, oh, look at the price of it today. So I think, I mean, what they do is they obviously, they try and match the number of drivers to the demand. Right. Uh, and in fact, I was looking at another article um, it, and to be fair to Uber, because they have had a lot of bad press, um, uh, it's the truth that matters. But the, the truth is they've had a new chief executive came in in the autumn and he, uh, at the very least, in PR terms, he's softening the edges. Um, I mean, there was, uh, did you hear or or even see, there was a video of the yeah. previous CEO yeah. laying into one of the drivers, um, which yeah. is never a good idea. Is no, it? The, in, in terms of PR, you, you'd go, you'd be hard-pressed to, unless you actually murdered one of their drivers on YouTube, you'd be hard-pressed to, to do a worse job of PR, would you, than the last guy? Yeah, yeah. And, and presumably he didn't know the camera was rolling, but that's not the point. The no. point is that he would even think to speak to his staff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, but Alex, just, just roll back a second. You, you mentioned yeah. that, that whether they're an information service or in the taxi business. You see, I agree with them. I think I think they are an information service and the people who are driving the cars are in the taxi business. Well, if that's the case, then you could extend that to black cabs, although I probably wouldn't help their argument necessarily. I I think there are there are too many links back to the company. It's not like a bloke is just um, using the information, then collecting the cash and putting it in his pocket, is he? He's giving, he or she, giving, uh, to get back to sexist terms, to, um, is giving, I think, uh, I read, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about 25% back to the company. Right. Which you might think is quite quite a steep It is percentage. quite steep, isn't it? Really? I, I don't know what um, black cabs give back to their control. I don't know what. You know, if they're radio controlled, I don't know how that works. But no, no, I know they pay. Obviously, they pay a fee. There are there are a number of apps now, aren't there, for black cabs? And get G E W T is is one of them, in the capital, right? At least. Um, so, so if, no, I don't know you, how that would compare. If you're in charge of the tax regime in this country, you wouldn't you wouldn't be having any of it. Then you'd be saying, no, actually, you're in the taxi business. You're you're not in information dissemination business. I think so because it's not like they're one minute they're. Um, uh, um, arranging your pizza uh, and then the next a cab and then the next something entirely different they are very focused on a, a moving people's around business uh, and there must be so much infrastructure from hr to to their own finance department i mean there are too many tentacles there all leading back to to that being their core business so just eat then for example would be in the catering business <sighs> You could argue. Well, I don't know. Um, you see, well, that's why I think that's that's personally where I come. From. I think. Hang on. If you look at similar kinds of of setups, would you say that they were, uh, you know, in in the business that they're actually deli- they are they are delivering the technology so that the people delivering the service can deliver the service. That that's how I view it. And and that and just just eat. I think is a really good example. In you know, they're, they're not actually making pizzas or burgers or a bag of chips. They're actually providing, and in the same way, Uber aren't actually 
they don't own the vehicles, they don't employ the drivers. I mean, all this this rubbish, and I hate this country for this, is that, you know, we talk about how how great we are as entrepreneurs and all the rest of it, and yet we won't let people be self-employed. They're going, oh, Uber drivers should have holiday pay and they should have benefits. No, they're self-employed, you idiots. And because they're self-employed, they get better tax breaks because that's that's the nature of being self-employed. But no, we don't want to do that. It's like people on zero hours contracts if they use their head and said actually i'm self-employed they would be in a better position rather than going oh i just i just i, I want my cake and eat it i want to i want to be i want to be um not tied to a company but i also want all the benefits as well do you know what i mean i, I can't this this idea that they're treating their drivers badly because they're not paying them sick pay or holiday pay well they're self-employed why, why would they uh it depends on the, on the basis on which they're scheduled and i don't know the detail maybe you know more about this i mean if if um a client stroke employer says to you we need you on this day then mm. that's looking much more like a, an employee employer relationship isn't it i think yeah if they if they say we need you on this day and if you don't turn up on this day then you're not going to you're not going to get any more work stroke business or whatever um but then i was self-employed working for the bbc and and you know, I mean, they're another one. They want to they, to try and appease the inland revenue. They want their cake and eat it. They want to they want to do the right thing by the inland revenue, but they don't particularly want to give you any of the terms and benefits that their full time employees get. So they're kind of they've created this pseudo halfway house. But nobody criticizes them for it. But equally, if I if I'd have said to the BBC, actually, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna knock a week off, thanks. I'm not gonna do my show this week. Can you imagine whether they would have renewed my contract at the end of it? I, mm. I, I think not. So how's that? I don't understand how that's any different. If somebody's self-employed, they're self-employed. Yes, if if they're employed, they should get the full benefits that that people get. And I think this, to me, this is what I see happening with with Uber. I mean, because taxi drivers, black cab drivers are self-employed. They don't get benefits, do they? Um, no, as far as I know. Although well, there, there could be a number of relationships now with. I don't know how it works with uh, you know computer cab and and uh, you know you talk about those radio taxi firms but mm. i think they are, as as far as i know they're they're free to clock on and clock off aren't they yeah i believe i, th- I think so i think i think it's, they work the hours that they want to work kind of thing and i suppose as you say that's a determination if you're self-employed if you can go right i'm, I'm going to do nine till 11 today but of course that doesn't work in every job does it like i say if if if, you, if you're a radio broadcaster and you do you do a <laughs> can i do the 12, breakfast show in the evening yeah you do i'm yeah i'm gonna do the breakfast show weekday breakfast show at the weekends if that's all right okay because i want a bit of flexibility in my uh my work-life balance i think they'd tell you to go and do one wouldn't they really but the, the whole so. the whole uber thing as well i mean i, I don't I just, it's quite interesting that they they talk about um the issues that they've had um, in the UK, but this is happening all over the world as well, isn't it? I mean, this is this isn't yeah. just us. It, nobody knows what to do with Uber, do they? No, and it, and it, there's going to be more of these, not fewer, uh, in future, surely. And that's the way the world's moving, isn't it? What what happens but, when we leave the EU? Does does that does? Because I mean, I know you're kind of you're our you're our Brexit correspondent, aren't you? Because you're so up for coming out of the <laughs> you want to you want to be out of Europe. I, 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 I've got so frightened about mentioning the B word in front of you. I wasn't going to raise that. Yeah. But, well, it sounds like we're going to be under the EC, ECJ, if I could only say it or see it, uh, the European uh, Court of Justice for some years to come. Um, but after that, yes, technically we, uh, or technically or actually, if Brexit uh, happens as, as Theresa May is promising it, um, yeah. then it w- w- we won't be answerable to them. But what I suspect you'll find is we'll, we'll end up shadowing them. But that's only if you ask me to guess. Um, but who can really right. guess what's going on in Brexit land? It's, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hey, I've just had a look at the meter, and you've got to get out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's time up on this particular podcast Uber journey. for. Uh, I've for gone over. You've got you've got to pay me double bubble for the last minute, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it's double fair because I didn't realise there were so many uh, there were so many podcasts about, but so few were as good as this. So I'm putting the price up. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? If we could all do yeah, that. Worth Listen, a try. if you've enjoyed being with us, we've really uh, we've really enjoyed your company uh, this week for uh, podcast eleven. Uh, it's a bit different, isn't it? As we head into Christmas and the New Year, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a mm. couple of. Uh, 
um, sort of Christmas and New Year flavoured ones, I suppose. Why wouldn't you, really? Uh, mm. So uh, I might even get a, as well. I might get a, a fifth piece. Pe- I'll try that again. Uh, I might be yeah. uh, get a fifth piece. Of- <laughs> really, I haven't been at the sherry, honestly. Uh, a fifth piece of tinsel is what I was trying to say. <laughs> For the next show, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If it takes you that long to say it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even bother going to fetch it. To be honest with you, uh, we're on. We're on iTunes. We're on Spreaker. And if you want to see the pictures, tell them Adrian where they can see the pictures. I don't know if I can really. Um, I'll, maybe I'll mime it. So do it through the medium of dance uh, for those who are viewing. Um, we're on. We're on YouTube. And uh, the important thing is the ampersand, that little and sign, which uh, Shane reminded me is above the seven on your keyboard. Um, so bull and specs bull ampers and specs we'll see you next time uh, if you don't catch up with us for the christmas and new year editions have a great christmas and new year yeah happy christmas from both of us <laughs>